Believe it or not, the title isn't clickbait. As far as I know, there's never actually been a benchmarking tool for TypeScript. And no, I don't even mean the speed at which it compiles necessarily. What I mean is the performance of your types and your type checking in applications and in libraries. For those of us who have used libraries like TRPC or even libraries like Drizzle, in large code bases, they can get pretty slow and not the performance users feel. That will always be fine. What I'm talking about very, very specifically is the performance of your IDE and your type checking tools. So when you're using a big code base with a ton of TRPC in it, or even just a bunch of Zod validators, it's pretty common that your TypeScript server just dies because it's choking under the weight of all these different things it has to check. And there's a lot of libraries I rely on that don't have the best performance when it comes to the actual type checking side. To be fair, it's not necessarily their fault. They're using TypeScript as it's recommended by the TypeScript team, but the TypeScript team's recommendations aren't particularly considerate about performance, and they haven't really provided us many ways to identify where our performance bottlenecks and issues are, which is why I'm really hyped that the archetype team has built and released a new tool for testing the performance of your types, not the code that comes out of them after. So let's take a look at this tool and why it's so important. As TypeScript developers, we rely on our types to know our code works. But as our types become complex, how do we know they work? Unfortunately, existing type tests are limited by static analysis until now. Introducing archetype slash at test. So this is what I was most excited about. The alpha version includes type level benchmarking so you can understand exactly how each change affects the performance of your types. That's huge. With something like upload thing, our types are getting increased increasingly complex as we create these dynamic builder patterns. And I want to make sure that that doesn't slow down the editors of people using upload thing. Previously, that was nearly impossible to test and honestly was a lot of gut feel. We would make a change, play with it in our editor and see if it crashed more or felt slow. And since a lot of us are using these really nice high-end M1 to M3 MacBooks that cost tens of thousands of dollars now, the performance that we see is very different from what a lot of our users are going to end up seeing. So making sure we have ways to identify when our types get too heavy is super super important. And it's dope to see the success they're already finding with testing these things. And I love that they're actually using Zod as an example here, because as much as I love Zod, and I do absolutely love Zod, its performance is not great compared to other things. It takes a lot more work in the type system land in order to identify what the types are when you create a more complex discriminated union and things like that. That said, having good tests for your types and assertions is not a bad thing. And having that built into a testing framework is dope. I'm already writing a bunch of tests for our types in our code base, but they're much more sketchy, like assert type stuff. Having a proper library designed for type testing is actually really exciting. And we'll almost certainly be adopting this in the upload thing code base as soon as next week. I am genuinely really excited about that. Betches are run separately from tests and don't require any special setup. That honestly surprises me. For something like this, I would have expected some amount of setup to be necessary, but it's really nice you don't have to worry about it. Below file is benches.ts. You could run it with something like tsx benches.ts or ts node benches.ts. That's okay. That's really cool. Bench call single stat median. includes median. Bench type return as any is. Well, snapshot type instantiation count can be a bit finicky. Result zero. A test as any is make complex type. That's really cool. Absolute legend, by the way. If you guys don't already know Archetype, it's a dope crew and a really cool project. Think Zod, but focused almost entirely on being really, really fast and really, really optimized both in the runtime when you do the validation, but also in the type definitions when you're working with it in your editor. I've heard more and more people getting hyped on Archetype. And if they're building tools like this, I can see why. I just don't know many others who are focused on building things this, this, detailed in terms of both their understanding of the problem that us TypeScript zealots have, and also solving it in such a concrete, useful way. Like if you see the people replying on Twitter here, he tagged in a handful of us. I'm a little offended I wasn't in the tags here, but I get it. But you see all this hype from these people. Yeah, this is a dope crew to pull in because what has been built here is huge. Also be sure to link this tweet in the description. So if any of y'all aren't already following Archetype, go take a look at the account. Definitely give this tweet a signal boost. It deserves it. This isn't for everybody. I don't expect most of the developers even watching this to benefit from these tools, but I do think they're essential for the libraries that most of us are using. So even if you're not the target audience for what's here, you're using many tools by the people who are, and the sooner you can get 
these resources to them and the sooner they discover they exist, the faster the whole ecosystem can move. First, look at the code. Make complex type. This is a complex inference where you pass it a string and it does a check and a recursive complex type head tail call for every letter in it. So as the number of letters goes up, the amount of work TypeScript has to do goes up as well. And if we look here, you see that the first result, 169 instantiations, and the second result, 349 instantiations. I actually like that a lot because it's not just milliseconds timing. It's showing you how many things have to be done for those types. And if I am understanding this correctly, the way this is working is it's actually using TypeScript to track how many things occur in this type definition. And in order for it to be type safe, you have to put a specific number here. Like if I took this code and I put 170 here instead, this is going to fail. Is that correct? Is my understanding correct here? Yeah, you can set a threshold for how far over the current value is allowed before we'll error. That is awesome. That is actually really dope. You can set a threshold that's like this can only go up to 300 instantiations. If it's more than that, we error. And that sets a hard wall for how complex you can make your types for a specific thing. That's actually a really cool feature. I didn't even thought of that. And that shows where I'm at with these things. But yeah, this piece is also really, really important. One of the best aspects is that it's extremely deterministic CI. Across platforms, even across most TypeScript versions, it will be exactly the same. That is huge. There are very few performance tests, period that have that level of deterministic behavior. If I'm trying to make sure code is and stays fast, usually that means running it with a specific spec on a specific box and having like a 10 to even 30% delta in either direction just from random shit happening. If you're not actually checking the speed the code runs, you're checking how many things the code runs, that maps pretty directly to speed, even if it's a different mapping depending on how powerful your computer, your CI, everything else is. But what you're benefiting from here is that strict number that will be the same for everyone. I can run this test on my computer and on my CI and get the same numerical output for the benchmark. That's huge. And as Arc says here, some instantiations are going to be cheaper than others, but the correlation is very strong. And I would bet if I threw one of our TRPC routers into there, that it's going to have a crazy number of instantiations. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but it's something that we can now be conscious of and test directly. So this is huge. I'm actually really, really hyped on this. And now that I've seen it, I'm only more hyped. Fantastic work to the Arc team. I'm expecting more developers, especially library devs, to start adopting this tool. And I'm going to go try it out and upload thing probably this weekend because I, I immediately see the value here. Give Arc a follow if you haven't already. Keep an eye on this project. I think they're going really cool places. I appreciate them immensely both for helping me make this video and making the whole ecosystem better as they do it. So again, huge shout out to the team. If you want to hear me talking more about all sorts of chaotic TypeScript stuff, I'll put a video in the corner there about it. And if you've already seen that and you're not interested, YouTube thinks you like the one underneath it. Thank you guys as always. Appreciate you all a ton. Peace, nerds.